you, Victoria, and you should be getting a notification that says this meeting is being recorded. You just hit got it. And then you are all set for this workshop. So welcome everyone. Um, we hope that you were here for a first day of class, Centering Equity and Access from day one. Um, there's a lot of great presentations that we are doing this week, and so I know sometimes you can click the wrong link, but we're very excited to talk about this topic today. My name is Katherine Grossman, my pronouns are she, her, and I am one of the graduate assistants for the teaching and learning team at CTRL, and I would hand it over to Gavin to introduce themselves. Uh, good morning, and, and as Catherine said, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gavin Fromey, and I am another graduate assistant for teaching and learning, happily working at CTRL. Hey, good morning, everyone. And I'm Hannah Jardine. I'm a teaching and learning specialist here at CTRL, as well as an adjunct faculty member in the School of Education. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this first session of the first day of August faculty workshops. I'll also say uh, today is my birthday, so I'm very happy to be celebrating it with you all and starting um, the day off with some, some celebration. This is a fun session. All right, back to Catherine. Awesome. So to start us off, Hannah, if you'll click to the next slide. We just wanna go over, since it's the first workshop of the, the first day, um, we just wanted to go over some of our guidelines for participation. Um, and if you've attended one of our workshops before, you know that we always start with guidelines um, and it's especially important in this workshop since we're gonna be talking about collaborative norm setting and, and some of these guidelines are very important for that. So the first, Guideline is just to make yourself comfortable. Um, if you need to get up and walk around, craft, knit, I love to doodle sometimes. It helps me be a more active listener. Um, we encourage you to do that. Um, we would love you to be as present as you can be. So if you would please participate in individual group activities in any way that works for you, we greatly appreciate that. And so do your colleagues. Um, if you would like to ask questions or share ideas, we encourage you to do that in the chat. But if you would like to speak to the room entirely, we just encourage you to use the raise hand function and you can find that under the reactions tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And as always, we just encourage you to be generous with your knowledge and also respectful of others' knowledge. So we're gonna start off, um, oh yeah, and then introductions in online classrooms. So, um, some of you may be familiar with this if you've utilized the Zoom platform before, but you have the ability to rename yourself. And I would encourage you, especially if you have an online or hybrid class, to encourage your students to rename themselves as well. Um, so you go onto the three dot function and you scroll down to rename and you can add your name as you would like it to appear as well as your pronouns. Um, so that's very helpful for introductions and also it models for your students a more inclusive and accessible um, element of, of the Zoom platform. So we encourage you to do that as we're introducing ourselves to our colleagues. And then we're gonna start out with a quick little activity through the Poll Everywhere platform. Um, so if you click the link at the top of this slide, and um, we're also gonna put it in the chat, it will bring you to Poll Everywhere. Um, you can also utilize the QR code as well if you've got your phone handy. Um, and we really want you to reflect on this kind of overarching question, which is how do you want your students to feel on the first day of class? So if possible, if you can condense that into a one word feeling or descriptor of how you want your students to feel on the first day of class, and in the Poll Everywhere thing, it'll ask if you want to excite it. That's a good word. Um, it will ask you to enter your name if you want. You can also skip that and just enter the word. So excited, energized, included are three of the things so far. Confident, curious, welcomed, engaged, calm, collegial. So it looks like curious and comfortable are some major ones included. Open, enthusiastic, safe, motivated is a big one. Open, happy. <laughs> Chosen, that's a, that's a good one. Mm 
Awesome. So these word clouds are great to get first impressions from your students um, and can give you an overarching understanding of preconceived notions and preconceptions that students might have about certain topics or the course in general. Um, so we really wanted to present this as a tool that you can use in your classrooms. Um, so this looks great. Thank you everyone for participating. I think we encourage you to keep these words in mind um, throughout the session, kind of think of this as your, your goal setting, um, because we are going to present a lot of ideas for you today. So think about what feelings really resonated with you and what um, strategies or activities we present that match those goals. Excellent. And it looks like the activity is full. So if you have any other responses, feel free to stick those in the chat if it won't let you do an on poll everywhere. Awesome. So before we get going on kind of the tools and skills that we're going to discuss today, um, we just want to go over the workshop outcomes. So by the end of the workshop, we're hoping that you will be able to explain the benefits of collaborative norm setting and other community building exercises for you and your students. Um, identify various approaches to building community, reviewing syllabus collaboratively, and facilitating a norm setting conversation. And we hope this is helpful to developing a plan to center equity and access starting from the first day of your semester. So we're going to do another activity, and this is called a focus listing activity. And this is another activity which can be really helpful for the first day of class. Um, it encourages students to kind of reflect on their past courses or their past experiences and how it might relate to your course or the topic that you, the first topics that you're going to be discussing in your course. And it's called a focus listing activity. So we're going to encourage you to uh, take a look at the question in a moment, and you're going to write down all the answers that you can think of in one minute in the chat, but do not hit send <laughs> until after the minute has passed. Um, and then we're going to see all of the different responses that you have together. Um, so that is the essence of the focus listing activity. So we're gonna present the question in just a second, and then you're gonna have a minute to write down your responses, but do not hit enter until after a minute has passed. And we will, we will indicate for you after a minute has passed. So the question is, what do you think the benefits of collaborative norm setting and what are other community building exercises for you and your students? So what do you think are the benefits of collaborative norm setting and other community building exercises for you and your students? So again, take to the chat and write down all that you can think in response to this question, but do not hit enter until we indicate that a minute has passed. Okay, it has been a minute, so I encourage you to wrap up your reflections and share them with us in the chat. So I see build community, uh, classroom communities, and help some of the more uh, timid students to gain confidence. Have students feel heard and respected and set expectations, identify many perspectives and help with engagement, set expectations, overall outcomes of the class, learners as agents, that's a very great phrase, build authenticity and trust, create a genuine dialogue, 
craft a collaborative learning space, foster connections, brave space for learning, camaraderie between students, a sense of safety, teamwork and trust, student ownership and agency. And I see a lot of referencing of inclusivity and access and equity, which are huge things that we want to center in our classrooms. Is there anything my fellow presenters are, are seeing as I scroll through? <laughs> no, and I think it's, it's great to see the, um, the similarities among your answers, words like trust, breaking down power structures are standing out to me. Um, and that is why we we did this activity the way we did or why Catherine asked you to wait and all press enter at the same time so that um, that all voices could be heard and, or well, not heard in this case, but read. And that, um, you know, if you had seen say one of your colleagues answer the question similar to what you wanted to say, you might not have entered your answer, but when we all wait to go together, then more people are able to answer and share their ideas. It's a very equitable and inclusive way to, to kind of see where the class is at and, and get multiple perspectives on the same questions and issues. Awesome. Thank you for participating. I think this is, in recording this, you're also going to have access to the chat. And so this is great to share ideas and, and build community amongst ourselves as instructors as well. Awesome. So real quick, we're going to go over um, the value of community building. And there are three kind of categories um, for benefits of community building. So the first one is emotional. Um, so some emotional benefits include, and, and some of you already listed in the chat, um, some of the emotional benefits to community building. So it helps empower and motivate your students, um, and it gives them autonomy and uh, input into their classroom environment, and it helps to create a foundation for which all can engage in learning more fully. The second category of um, values um, and benefits for community building are logistical. Um, so it kind of helps create together with your students a structure of accountability. Um, and it gives everyone input and insights into that, um, the creations of those structures, and it can really help um, with equity and inclusion. And it also gives you value as an instructor because you're setting clear expectations and guidelines from day one. And so that's something that you can um, continue to evolve throughout the class, but it also gives you a, a foundation moving forward um, in the class. And the third category is, is social benefits. So it kind of fosters this sense of belonging um, within the classroom. It creates a safe space um, for engaged discussion um, and contributions from students, and it establishes an overall positive and inclusive classroom environment. And it's important to note that these three categories are overarching and rather broad, and they're also not mutually exclusive. So you can certainly have multiple benefits from um, collaborative norm setting and um, inclusive uh, classroom environment at the same time. So why do we care about um, this? Well, there's a great line in what inclusive instructors do that shows that talks about the evidence based practice of social belonging and the fact that it can lead to higher achievement for students, particularly if they're from marginalized groups. So this is kind of the what drives home. And if we're committed to inclusivity and equity in our instruction, then this is something that we really need to focus on um, as we are crafting our courses and starting out um, the semester. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Gavin to facilitate our next activity. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so if you bought into the idea that it's important for people to feel like they belong in a space, if that if that seems uh, rational to you, um, then let's talk through some ideas about how you can achieve that. Um, 
And one of the classic ways that people use in order to get people involved in a space and make them feel like they're a part of it and welcome is the so-called icebreaker. Um, so, but but the term has always seemed a bit um, uh, loaded. So what I'm curious is, if you would all be so kind as to enter into the chat, what comes to mind when you hear, let's do an icebreaker? So take a moment to, to think about that phrase and type in what comes to mind. No, thank you. Right off the feel, bat. Feel no, free to you. use emojis as well. If that's sure, helpful. yeah. <laughs> This is uh, this is this can be uh, a, whatever form of expression, emotional or just uh, you know logical, I suppose. Um, I actually love them. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Jody. There's so we got a range here. Um, go easy, uh, dread. Ooh, uh, silly activity. No relevant content. That's really interesting. So the idea Vicky points out that. It's not necessarily relevant to the class material. Um, I, I, yeah, there's a there's a really interesting uh, range here. Uh, routine way of starting the first class: student chat in small groups, get to learn about each other. Okay, so Bruce is pointing out that they have some utility um in terms of that community building aspect or potential utility um the game don't break the ice so people are providing specific examples um agreed forced activity and the idea that students are that you or this individual feels like they are that the concept of an icebreaker is something that is imposed upon you um I see the value, but I've done so many uncomfortable ones, I dread it. Okay, I think this is these are all great places to start. Um, and I think they encompass the, the spectrum of uh, these kinds of activities um, and their potential for achieving this kind of community building or the potential for going very wrong and and leading people to feel like they're uncomfortable in a space. Um, so let's talk a bit about the ways that these are achieved. What makes a this kind of activity effective, and what might make people feel like it's uncomfortable to to participate in? Uh, next slide. Um, so I guess the, the first thing to address is the icebreaker in, in scare quotes here, um, because you might consider renaming it to something else. Um, and these terms, warm up, introduction, community building activity, getting to know each other, um, what have you, are really going to be uh, dependent upon what you consider the function of the activity to be. Um, is the purpose of the activity just to get people, you know, engaged in the space? Maybe it is a warm up, like you would for exercise. You're just getting the mind working, or perhaps on the first day of class, you are using it as an opportunity to build community, or for students to get to know each other, or for you to get to know your students. Um, in which case, maybe using one of those other titles might be more appropriate. Um, but you know, there's a there's power in in these kinds of labels. So if icebreaker has all of these emotions tied into it, consider using perhaps an alternative phrase um, that students might not feel as uh, uncomfortable with. Um, giving students a chance to reflect before sharing, um, as we just did in our uh, activity. Um, not only is that an opportunity for people to, to uh, you know, have a chance to, to see other people's responses in that instance, but in general, giving students an opportunity to reflect provides them a space to think about their response and, and it generally increases the quality of the response uh, because there's not a, the same pressure to, to get out whatever their first thought is. Um, Ask broad, open-ended questions that are widely applicable and provide a variety of ways to approach the answer. Um, 
that seems like a excellent way for students to express their personal opinions or ideas. It validates people's identities to be able to express things that are unique to them and answer that they develop that they come up with as opposed to to hunting for a very specific response because if you've ever been in a class where an instructor has just asked you a question and you expect and they expect a specific response it really just shuts down conversation because there's no room for error you either have the correct answer or you don't. And if you don't, you don't want to participate. So asking these broad questions invites people to, to express themselves. Um, and breaking students into pairs or small groups, um, as one uh, person commented, is an excellent way for them to get to know each other. The opportunity to have these conversations in smaller groups uh, is great for people who don't necessarily feel comfortable sharing in front of the larger class. So it's a more equitable way for students to uh, participate and communicate with one another and really provides this kind of a, a lower um, pressure environment in which students can share their ideas and, and really feel like they have a, a voice. Uh, things not to do in terms of icebreakers. Uh, I'm sure you could you could expand on this list if you wanted to, but force students to share deeply personal information. Um, generally not a good idea uh, to force students to, to answer questions if they are feeling uncomfortable, but especially if it's about anything relating to things that they might not want to share with a group of strangers. Um, Ask any very specific questions, like I said, uh, tends to shut down conversation if students don't have the answers to those questions. Um, require students uh, to memorize and restate information about their peers. Uh, once more, asking them to, to you know, memorize information during an activity that is supposed to be fun and engaging. Uh, tends to be stressful and likely will make the activity something that they dread. Uh, as many of you pointed out, um, put students on the spot, cold calling, uh, nothing worse. Uh, I think you can tend to find a lot of these don'ts just by putting yourself in the place of students and thinking, what would I feel comfortable with? So if I'm in a classroom, do I really want to have the instructor cold call on me? Um, is that something that makes me feel like I want to come to class? Is that something I look forward to? Um, in the, and uh, and in the, especially in the case of something that is supposed to be a, a warm up or, or some form of an introduction, um, it's not very welcoming just to force someone who may not be comfortable speaking in front of a group to, to do so. Um, next slide, please. So as a way to introduce this next category of first day of class activity, uh, we have a quote here from one of our CTRL student partners. Um, we meet with these partners um, once a week throughout the school year to talk about issues relating to course design, teaching, learning, what have you. Um, one of our conversations strayed into the realm of first day of class. And this particular student partner noted, on the ideal first day of class, the professor talks about the purpose of class and students have a way to communicate privately with the instructor. Like an initial survey sends a message, they care to get to know students. So guess what the next topic is? Slide please. Student introductions. Uh, if you're wanting students to feel that uh, you care about them and you want to get to know them and you're invested in their learning success, um, student introductions are a great way to do that. Um, also builds community. And as Catherine pointed out, that sense of belonging and community is a great way for students to feel like they are engaged in a, in a group process of learning and exploring content. Um, there are a variety of ways you can get to know your students. Uh, a classic way uh, is personalized name tense. Um, this can be done even 
while students are just getting to class. You could lay out a, a sheets of paper, some colored markers, pencils, what have you, and have students take a piece of paper, fold it in half. You, you probably are familiar with this. Write their name, their pronouns, and decorate it with some images that uh, reflect their own interests or identity. Something fun, something that is engaging that, um, that then they can share their, their personality with their peers, uh, but in a way that they're comfortable with, not, not forcing them to disclose anything that they wouldn't like to share. You can see, um, I wonder who Dr. Jardine is on the side right there uh, with those uh, lovely pictures of, well, Hannah, what does this say about you? What does this uh, name tag state about you? Uh, so I chose to include my two cats, Gizmo and Luna, a plant because I love plants and some waves in the sun because I enjoy the beach. And and that's that's it. That's how that's how it is. There's a uh, you know just a few fun drawings, or maybe if they're like me and I'm not an artist, uh, I'm probably not going to draw anything too fancy. Um, but uh, you know, just the opportunity for people to have the chance to express themselves can be a fun way to introduce students to one another. Um, you might also consider um, going through the Canvas site uh, on the first day of class and using that as an opportunity for to, to host a discussion among students. Um, that provides an opportunity for you to not only introduce students to the Canvas site, uh, but also to have the first day of class be a space where they can ask questions about different elements of the site if they're unfamiliar with it or just how to navigate your particular course site. Um, and uh, you might also consider encouraging students to reflect on their goals and motivations. Um, this could be incorporated into a warm-up activity, or it could be its own activity. Um, generally, this could be something like asking students questions about uh, what goals they have for themselves or in the course, uh, what are you motivated for taking, what was your motivation for taking the course, and what are you hoping to get out of the class? Um, these types of questions are uh, particularly useful for you as an instructor to not only get to know your students, for your students to get to know one another, but they can also spark really interesting conversations and provide an opportunity for students to, you know, uh, to share their uh, background um, with the course, why why it is exactly their relate what their relationship is with the material and and what they're hoping to learn so that then you can tailor the course content uh, to that experience. Um, next slide, please. Another quote from a CTRL student partner. Um, when the syllabus isn't responsive, you're treating students as bodies in a classroom rather than as individuals. Allowing students to comment on the syllabus teaches self-advocacy. Now, what do you think our next topic is going to be about? You got it, active syllabus review. Um, so active syllabus review involves, uh, well, it, it involves students having an opportunity to review the syllabus in class. Um, it provides students with an opportunity to get to know your course policies and also potentially to have a say in them. Um, this provides, uh, this promotes uh, a student-centered model of instruction by um, placing students as agents in their own learning journey. Um, there are a few different ways you can review a syllabus, but a classic would be having students be put into groups and given a series of questions such as, what are you looking forward to? What are you most concerned about? What questions do you have? Uh, what, be, uh, what beyond the requirements of the class are you interested in learning? And what policies should we adjust, revise, or create together? Um, that last one is particularly important because uh, there are a variety of course policies that you may wish to get student input on. Uh, some classics include things like use of technology, digital devices in the classroom, 
or what class what counts as participation in the class um, or more uh, uh, on a very basic level um, what counts as respectful discourse in the class setting these kinds of uh, common uh, expectations um, give students a sense that they are involved in the class in their own learning journey gives them a sense of um, agency and also provides students with um, you know this sense that you as an instructor care about their opinions and if they believe that you care about their opinions they are more likely to approach you with ideas for the course or concerns or in, in general, just come to your office hours and talk to you because you seem more approachable because you care about their uh, opinions and ideas. Um, one thing to note when you're considering an active syllabus review is whether you will have provided students with the syllabus before the class begins or whether you plan to go over it during class. So consider that before you undertake any kind of syllabus review. Are you providing them the syllabus and expecting them to go through it before class, or is that something you're going to build into the class time itself? Um, regardless of how you have this discussion, um, some options for debrief are to ask students to present the information and the, and the you know, results of their conversations um, in groups or as individuals. Um, and if you have a smaller class, you could always use a poll or survey to get students' thoughts. Um, that puts less pressure on students to speak out if they are in a smaller group and don't feel comfortable sharing. Um, but uh, yeah, the final uh, category of first day of class uh, activities is something that you probably have been waiting for. Uh, when do I get to the introduction of course content? When do I get to the actual point of the course? Um, well, there are good reasons to introduce course content on the first day of class. Um, uh, research and learning tells us that uh, any introduction to the course content can be a useful way of sparking curiosity and interest in the subject. Um, so it's generally worthwhile to, to do some uh, bit of course content introduction on the first day. Uh, it gets students curious and excited about your course content. Um, you can do this by asking thought-provoking questions to assess prior knowledge, connect to students' personal lives, have students discuss their beliefs and prior uh, experiences with topics that will come up in the course. Um, all of these are excellent ways, uh, but as we pointed out, their benefits are uh, not just so that you can gain a sense of how students feel about the content, but also just so students know that you're interested in uh, what their knowledge is and, and how to tailor your teaching to their experience. Um, there are a variety of tools you can use to get at this, uh, one of which we demonstrated earlier, Poll Everywhere, is um, effective if you want to just get students' general emotional vibes towards course content. Uh, this example that you're seeing on the right is one that Hannah used in one of her classes. The specific prompt was, what words would you use to describe your intended teaching persona? Um, so you can see that uh, people responded communicative, caring, empathy, growth. Um, if you were to, for example, teach a course on accounting, an introduction to accounting course, you might ask students, well, how do you feel about accounting? <laughs> you know, what is the, what is the uh, emotion that comes to mind when you hear the word accounting? Um, and that might be a potential prompt. Um, all of these are excellent ways to get at um, how students feel about your content and to assess their uh, general prior knowledge of it. Um, next slide. This is, yeah, so this is an example of a Jamboard. A Jamboard is a virtual, it's a Google uh, program that provides people with a virtual a whiteboard where they can post ideas and opinions. Um, it's an excellent tool for collaborating and 
getting a sense of um, different perspectives on a particular topic. Um, this particular Jamboard is one that Hannah used in one of her classes. Hannah, can you tell us a bit more about it? Um, sure, yeah, so this was, uh, I teach, in the School of Education, I teach future elementary teachers. Um, so this was a science course that they were taking and um, because I knew they were not science majors and potentially had um, some misconceptions about science or fears of science, we had a conversation first day of class about these three questions that you see here. What does science or engineering make you think about? Um, how do you feel about it? So this served a lot of purposes. It was kind of like an icebreaker, right? A getting to know you activity and that students created these in small groups. So they got to talk about their life experiences and their ideas and feelings, and then also create this together and then present it to the rest of the class. So it was a chance for everybody to get to know each other. And for me also as the instructor to now have kind of this pre-assessment at the start of the semester, where are students at um, and where to, what, how can I use that to inform where we're going to go? Um, and then Awesome. Uh, well, that's a great introduction because we are now about to, you guessed it, do a Jamboard. Um, now we are going to provide you with a link um, right here. Okay, I'll copy it into the chat. Line. Okay, thank you. Um, now, this is uh, going to be a space where you can collaborate with your colleagues. Um, we've talked about a few different kinds of first day of class activities that you could potentially use, uh, student introductions, syllabus review, and content introductions. Uh, and so what we'd like you to do is, in groups, um, go through the different slides of the Jamboard and add in sticky notes uh, you can find the sticky note option on the left side of the screen when you've entered the Jamboard. Um, and just add in your own examples of these kinds of activities that you might use in your class, either ones you have used or, or just ideas for ones that you've uh, come up with since uh, hearing a bit more about our examples. Um, you can choose between working in breakout room or um, I guess if you feel so inclined, you could work independently in the main room. Um, we'll want to remind you, though, to, during this activity, listen actively and make space for all uh, ideas to be shared and be open-minded. Um, so at this time, we're going to, if everyone has been able to access the link and nothing is going wrong, we're going to open up some breakout rooms for you all to join. Um, I, and want we'll give to, you... um, I have the rooms ready to go, but I'll just show for those who haven't used Jamboard before, we'll um, show you how it works. So we created different slide that you can switch between by clicking these arrows at the top for the three categories. We also have an other activity slide if you have other things to do on the first day of class. Um, and then you can add uh, sticky notes here. You can change the color if you'd like. Um, there's even the option to add images. Um, so you could search Google images if there's an image that you think might represent your idea better than words might. Um, so this is our opportunity to learn from each other and get all kinds of ideas for how you do things like student introductions, review the syllabus, or introduce content on the first day of class. Um, like Gavin said, we're, we're opening up rooms with four or five people in them, just in case some of you choose to stay in the main room. Um, and work independently. But hopefully you take advantage of the opportunity to talk to some colleagues about the first day of class. So we'll see you back in about um, 12 minutes. I have them set for. One of my favorite things is watching the participants <laughs> mm -hmm. number go down. Make sure nobody's alone. Yeah, 
missing there? Room six, maybe. The focus listing, collaborative norm setting and what it might look like to work with your students to develop norms and expectations. Um, so to lead into that, we have one more quote from our student partners. Um, and the question, oh no, I, we deleted the question at the bottom. So the candidness is an answer to think, what do you appreciate about, um, or what do you think makes an effective instructor? What do you appreciate when your instructors do? So this um, student answered candidness. So when thinking about my first impression of the professor, I think, what parts of myself am I allowed to show in the class? Am I allowed to bring the inquisitive part of me? Am I allowed to sit comfortably? What does the professor choose to be receptive to? And I think this was part of a larger conversation just around setting the, I guess the vibe or the, the classroom environment, the classroom climate, we sometimes use that term, um, communicating to students through implicitly or explicitly what, um, how they are allowed to show up in your class or how they are expected to um, or given permission to show up in your class. So thinking about that quote, and as we lead into collaborative norm setting, like you, you don't have to necessarily answer this in the chat, but at least reflecting to yourself, feel free to answer in the chat if you'd like, thinking about a time you've felt included in a class or in a meeting or in any other learning space and what made you feel included. Hmm, Bruce mentioning having a job to do rather than just being expected to sit and listen. So this idea of actively engaging our students in that first day of class, that it's not a passive, receptive experience, but they're actively part of it. Uh, yeah, so as you're thinking about that question, um, which could certainly be a question you ask your students on the first day of class, that leads us into this idea of collaborative norm setting. So uh, we gave you a lot of ideas for first day activities earlier and collaborative norm setting might be another one that you add to your list or even do in say a second class after um, the you know, student roster has settled. Um, so what does that look like? So the first step being that individual reflection piece that it's so important to give everybody in the room a chance to think about um, what's important to them. And so, for example, we asked you that question of thinking about a time that you felt included and why, and gave you the chance to think or write your ideas and perspectives. After you ask students to um, individually reflect, you might break them into small groups and ask them to have a small group discussion where they share their ideas with a peer or um, a group of three or four other students and recognize common themes. Um, so are there things that are coming up in the way they answered the question that are shared across the group or are there differences and why might there be differences? Then leading into a whole glass discussion, you might ask each group to share one idea that came from the group that they kind of came to a consensus around and creating a combined list with the whole class. And then lastly, coming to a class agreement. So presenting that final list to students for their approval might be during that session or even in a follow-up session, um, and then checking for potential revisions or clarifications. This is one way to um, approach the collaborative norm setting conversation. Not that it has to go in these four steps, but what we really wanna communicate here is that there should be a combination of um, time for individual reflection, time for students to work in smaller groups, and then time for you to come together as a class and um, come to consensus. So some guiding questions for norm setting, a number of questions you might ask students to get their ideas flowing. Here are some of our suggestions and you can certainly use more than one of these. Uh, so that question we asked during that individual reflection was a great one. And some others might be, when you're a member of a class or a group, what guidelines for interaction do you most value? Uh, what values or principles should we prioritize as a class? What motivates you to participate in class? What do you need from your classmates for productive interactions? What can I do as the instructor to help support your learning? Uh, what are the characteristics of the most positive classrooms you've been a part of? Or any variety of these questions. 
Um, so when asking students to think about these questions, it can be helpful to provide examples of possible answers. I think especially for first year students um, or any students who might not be used to having these questions asked of them. Um, so in a few slides, we'll present some examples that you could offer to students to help get them started as to what um, might be reasonable to answer here. So some tools for facilitating norm setting, there are a number of tools you could use to support this, um, whether you're teaching fully online or in person or even hybrid, um, having students reflect via shared documents like Google Docs, polling tools like Poll Everywhere that we used before. So Poll Everywhere doesn't just have word cloud option that we modeled, but also open-ended um, polling questions. Mentimeter is another free tool. Um, Padlet is a free tool. Message boards uh, where students can kind of post ideas. It looks more like a digital uh, bulletin board. Whiteboards like Jamboard that we just modeled or Miro is another option. And then if you're on Zoom, the Zoom chat or Zoom polls, um, essentially just thinking of what tool might work for you and your students to gather their insights and ideas about um, expectations or guidelines for the class. And especially in larger classes, digital tools can be particularly helpful um, to come to that consensus and see everybody's ideas in one place. But also if you're teaching in person, you might choose to facilitate the norm setting conversation using um, some more paper and pen or pencil writing tools. So um, it could be as simple as writing or drawing on pen and paper or using index cards or sticky notes that help support sorting and organization around themes. So you could ask students to list one idea per sticky note or card and then categorize when they get into those small groups. Uh, you could also set up prompts on poster paper, or whiteboards so that students can write on those um, together. And um, a point we want to make though, regardless of modality, regardless whether you're in-person, online or hybrid, try variety tools and ask students for their format preference, whether they'd like to, you know, should we open up a Jamboard or do you want to use the handwritten post-its and see um, what they think. So one quick example to see how this might look in a class if you're setting up the guidelines. Um, this is an example of the slide that I presented to um, an education class during our first class session last fall. So I gave all students a pad of sticky notes. I asked them to write one to three proposed class norms, gave them some ideas, um, posing three questions to guide their thinking, or I'm sorry, two questions. What values or principles should we prioritize as a class or what guidelines for class interactions do you appreciate? And then we had also done a pre-semester survey where they had answered a question before coming to the first day of class. And the question was, from your perspective, what makes an inclusive or welcoming class environment? So it reminded them of some of the ideas that came up or that they said, oh, being open-minded, discussion without fear of judgment, different perspectives encouraged. Um, so then after they had a chance to write all their ideas individually, broke them into small groups to organize their ideas and then had each group share one idea out loud. We typed those up on a Google Doc displayed at the front of the room and opened up the floor for comments, clarification. So that led to a really productive dialogue um, and kind of set the tone for very positive, inclusive class community for that semester. And then I still collected all the sticky notes and read through them, made sure that everything was represented in our final class list. Um, and we created a poster from those and our finalized norms and themes. Uh, especially for future teachers and for education majors, felt that going through this process was particularly important, but it is certainly relevant regardless of your discipline and can be um, done in regards of your discipline. And then what came out of that was this, um, these class norms. So at the start of the second class, we presented this list together um, that was a combination of what we had come up with as a group and me rereading all of what they had written. Uh, and again, opened up space for discussion and then posting this on the learning management system and then remembering to, to bring students back to this. So around midway through the semester in the mid-semester feedback survey, had students reflect on, you know, how are you upholding these class norms? Are they still resonating with you? Is there anything we need to add or change? What more could you do to better um, better demonstrate these classroom norms, it really got them reflecting on, you know, I think I've been really open-minded and respectful, but I just haven't been super engaged. And I, I um, 
committing to being more engaged for the second half of the semester, things like that. Um, and certainly this activity might look different for different groups of students. Some students might need more guidance than others. Some students might not be as comfortable with this if they haven't been given this much agency in the past. Um, some students might want to discuss more practical or logistical norms like communication preferences. So really take this in the direction that makes sense for you and your students. So we'll wrap up with some key takeaways from uh, the entirety of the presentation, connecting back to those benefits that uh, Catherine introduced at the beginning of the session. So remembering that um, all of these different first day of class activities have emotional benefits. They empower students to feel that they have shared ownership over the learning space. Uh, the logistical benefits, engaging students in the creation of guidelines and enforcing accountability. And then also thinking about the social benefits, having or helping build a positive classroom climate focused on collaboration and learning. Um, so for instructors who have struggled with balancing flexibility with high expectations and rigor, um, these logistical benefits might be particularly helpful, but also think about the emotional and social, and Mac and I will have a session on that tomorrow morning um, if we'd like to, if you'd like to discuss that topic more. Um, so I believe Victoria will pop um, a link in the chat to an evaluation or a feedback survey that we're really um, grateful for your feedback on our session and to let us know what you learned and how things went. Um, but also we use this final reflection opportunity as a, um, a chance for us to get some feedback from you and to see what you've learned from this session. So what is one new thing you will do to center equity and access at the start of the semester? Feel free to add your ideas into the chat or um, just leave the session with this question in mind um, as you go forth in planning for the fall semester. They're saying definitely don't start with a memorization activity. Yeah, using online polls, even in person. Absolutely, Jody, and that can even give them an anonymous way to share input, which can help to increase comfortability on that first day. Giving students the space to develop community norms. Yeah, after the first class, for sure, they don't have to. It's not necessarily best for the first day of class. Multiple modalities. Absolutely. So feel free to continue entering ideas for one thing that you will take with you into the semester, and I will wrap up with a thank you. Um, we will drop links in the chat that you can always request a consult with any member of the teaching and learning team throughout the semester. They continue to explore our resources. We do have a page about the first day of class, and then we look forward to having you join for some of our other workshops. Um, two in particular that are related to this alternative grading coming up next and balancing structure and flexibility tomorrow morning. Gavin and Catherine, any closing thoughts? Thank you for your engagement and participation. We really love these first sessions. They're always so, everyone's so active and involved. Yeah, thank you for coming out first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm.